For me, of course, my story is the centrality of my life. The, the, everything begins and ends with me, the fact that I was the first born hearing child of two deaf parents. But I knew the title should be, and only could be, Hands of My Father, because when I think and thought and lived with my father when he was alive, to me, the essence of my father was his hands. Uh, his language was in his hands, and his language defined him. His culture, his thoughts, his history, everything was in his hands. About the time I was six years old, I became officially my father's translator. I was the, the interface between my father's deaf world and the hearing world. My mother, at the age of 89, she couldn't live alone anymore, so I brought her to live with me. And every other day she would tell me, I want to die, I want to die. In sign language, I want to die is the turning of the body. Then I said, wait, 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 don't die yet. I wrote a book. One day the book showed up. And we sat down, I'll never forget it, and I showed her the book, and there it was, and she traced with her hand, flying over Brooklyn by the author Myron Yuver. And you, I could see in her expression how excited she was. And when it came to the end, there's a picture of my mother, and she's holding her son, me, by the shoulder, and they're looking out the window of this, what's left of this colossal blizzard that occurs in Brooklyn in 1947. She turned and looked at me, pointed to the woman in the illustration, and said, me? And I said, yes, that's you, the mother that I love. And she started crying. And of course, I broke into tears as well. And at that time, she said, why don't you write about us? But talk about Lou, my husband Lou. She always referred to my father as a husband Lou, like this was some strange other person that was not, in fact, my father. With adult audiences, what happens is, when I tell them my story, first, they're fascinated at learning about this complex, invisible world in plain sight. Most of them have never interacted with a deaf person. They don't realize this, that it's a real language as opposed to just mimicking or miming something. They don't realize there's a culture involved. They know nothing about it. They're absolutely fascinated. It's a glimpse into this invisible world that now made visible. There is a rather large segment of the community who only way they understand the world around them is through their language. And that language is in their hands. And that's a beautiful, full, rich, complex language. And however it creates problems being deaf in the hearing world, it's a further appreciation of what those problems are. And that's what I hope is a lasting remembrance of my story.